And were it not for Jupiter, Earth would take far more knocks. Jupiter, here with one of its many moons, acts as a shield to the inner planets. Comets that pass too close are captured by Jupiter's Herculean gravity. This one, Comet Shoemaker Levy 9, was pulled from its elliptical orbit around the Sun. The comet, a fragile mix of ice and grit, was drawn to within 50,000 kilometers. It paid the price. Jupiter tore it into more than 20 fragments. And that was just the beginning. Shoemaker Levy 9 was to stage a celestial showpiece. The comet was to plunge into Jupiter and carpet bomb the soupy atmosphere. From its perch in Earth orbit, the Hubble Space Telescope revealed a string of pearls. And because they were discovered well over a year before the event, astronomers had time to prepare. They'd watch as the multiple hearts of a comet hit a planet 1,300 times bigger than Earth. July 1994, and in New South Wales, the Anglo-Australian telescope was zeroing in. The week of the comet was at hand, and Shoemaker-Levy was performing brilliantly. As scientists had calculated, more than 20 pieces of grit and ice hurtled into the gas giant. Some were as big as mountains. But because the impacts were on the far side of Jupiter, just out of sight from Earth, observers had to hold their collective breath as the planet's spin brought the sight of each impact into view. Patience and preparation were rewarded. Day by day, these heat-sensitive images displayed the aftermath of each impact. More than 20 major collisions at 60 kilometers a second. Some were bigger than expected. In Australia, astronomers awaited a grand finale. Okay. 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 It was an astrofest. Front row seats at a celestial premiere with a nail-biting climax. And then you'll see at the bottom of the image, if one of them will get particularly page, bright, you'll see right at the bottom, the very edge. The impacts had come thick and fast. Each comet fragment had a letter. Tonight's vigil was for fragment W. David Crisp of California's Jet Propulsion Laboratory was team leader. As W approached Jupiter, tension mounted. Would the comet end with a bang or a whimper? Yes. Oh, <laughs> it was a dazzler, a signal so bright the astronomers had to protect the telescope's delicate sensors. Close down just a touch, Frank. Uh, down to 2.3, probably. And now for the picture of the blast. Whoa. 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 Got it! <laughs> Very dramatic. That evening, Crisp's team had captured the best image taken on Earth. A string of pearls a month before collision, with fragment W in the ring. Impact time predictions had been spot on. And so had imaging. From Earth, here's a plume rising a thousand kilometers above Jupiter's horizon. And from a spacecraft, the actual impact of fragment W and the resulting plume. For months afterwards, Jupiter sported its scars and they could be seen through the smallest telescope. Were this to happen on Earth, the result would be catastrophic. The dark crescent in these pictures is a shockwave as large as Earth itself. Imagine if Shoemaker-Levy 9 had hit us. Long ago, another comet swung close by Jupiter. It too, like Shoemaker-Levy, had its orbit forever changed by the gravity of the giant planet. 
that comet was Halley. Today it travels on a long elliptical orbit that carries it out beyond Neptune and back again for a spin around the Sun. Thanks to Jupiter, Halley is locked into a 76-year cycle. It last came our way in 1986. It's due back in 2061. Our understanding of comets began with Halley. More than any other, it's helped unlock the mystery of their origin. The story begins in the 17th century with the English astronomer Edmund Halley. Halley's friend and compatriot, Isaac Newton, the great physicist and mathematician, developed the theory of gravity. Bodies in space, he deduced, didn't travel in straight lines. Instead, their motion was bent by the attraction of others. In 1680, Newton observed the motion of a comet. He worked out that it wasn't traveling in a straight line, but in an orbit around the sun. So he suggested that a comet with a small enough orbit might be seen again and again. To test the idea, Edmund Halley analyzed the sightings of 24 comets. Two important observations emerged. First, three of the sightings were separated roughly by the same 76-year interval. Second, these same three comets seem to have virtually identical orbits. Could they be one and the same comet, a regular visitor? If so, the next return should be in 1758. Sure enough, on Christmas Day 1758, long after Halley's death, the comet reappeared. It was named Halley's Comet. The revelation allowed astronomers to trace the comet back through time. One of these Chinese tomb drawings confirms Halley's appearance a century or two BC. A coin struck in memory of Julius Caesar also bears an image of Halley. It had been seen in the emperor's youth. This, from 648, is what people called a broom star. It's the same comet. In 1301, the Italian painter Giotto made Halley's Comet the Star of Bethlehem. Halley wasn't seen that first Christmas, but some astronomers have suggested another comet led the wise men on their journey. By the time of Halley's appearance in 1910, the world of advertising had caught up with history's most famous comet. Early 20th century scientists greeted the return of Halley with a new tool, photography. But the pictures lacked detail. The comet withheld its secrets. Three quarters of a century later, Halley's comet was back. This was its space age debut. In 1982, although still invisible optically, Halley was detected electronically. Then, through telescopes in 1983 and 84, Halley appeared to loop the loop, an effect of Earth's path around the Sun. By late 85, as it passed through Taurus, Halley could be seen in binoculars. A tail developed in December, and the comet was visible by naked eye. In January 86, the Northern Hemisphere had its best views. Halley was then lost for a while behind the sun, before reappearing in the skies of the southern hemisphere. Observers had magnificent views from late February to mid-April, twin tails quite discernible. But the show was almost over. Halley had begun its return to the outer planets. Before it disappeared, however, the comet was investigated and probed as never before from Earth and from space probes, data galore. Here, 
there, a head-on shot with spirals of gas trailing into space. The best images were recorded in the southern hemisphere, from the Chilean Andes. These show Halley after it rounded the sun.